the vast majority of what you have seen so far in geometry fits into this category of what I've got on the board. Okay, that if something is true, its converse is also true. This is true, its converse is true. Okay, and you can multiply out examples. But it's not always true. Um, a theorem does not always imply its converse, right? And I'm going to give you the most, hmm, um, it's not that common, but it is the most common example of a theorem where the converse is not true. You're going to need your ruler here, and you're going to actually need to do some measurements for me, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw for me three parallel lines, okay? But I want you to draw them in a particular way. On this vertical line here, I'm going to mark out, and you, I mean, on your page, maybe you can make it sort of like, uh, maybe draw out a section that's four centimeters here and two centimeters here, right? So with these two intervals, I now have one, two, three points. And that's where I want your three parallel lines to go through, okay? They can go at any angle, but if you want to be nice and simple and um, consistent with the rest of us, maybe you can just make them perpendicular to this line. It doesn't need to be, but it will just make your illustration simpler. So I have three parallel lines running through this. Um, it could be four and two. Honestly, it can be anything you like, but this will just make the number crunching a bit simple for us. Okay. So before I add anything else to this, before I add anything else to this, uh, we have three parallel lines. You know what those are. That line you started with, the vertical one, cuts all of those um, parallel lines. It goes across them. So it has a special name. Starts with a T. Anyone know? A transversal. Right, because literally going across, that's what transversal means, um, your parallel lines. Okay, now to this diagram of four lines, we're going to add another transversal. But this time, we're going to do it off at an angle rather than like nice and perpendicular. And you can draw it at any angle you like. In fact, look at the person next to you and make sure you draw it at a slightly different angle. Okay, so I'm going to draw mine here. Okay, like so. I'm going to do that, and I've created a new transversal, and it's off at an angle. Maybe someone will do it like that, or, or off going from bottom to top, left to right. But the point is, sure, another transversal, make sure it hits both of them. Okay. So I'm going to call this transversal 1 and transversal 2. Okay. Now, you remember, we started this thing off by saying 4 centimeters, 2 centimeters. Okay, now you all have a bunch of other second transversals. I would like you to measure out these same portions of that line. Now, by the way, these portions also have a name, this four centimeter and this two centimeter bit that's been cut off. Because the way it's been made is through those points of intersection, okay? We're actually going to borrow where we've been using all the time for when things intersect, which is that this line, or I should say this interval, and this interval are called intercepts. That is slightly confusing because you're used to thinking of intercepts as points, but in this context it's really these intervals that we're interested in and in their lengths. Okay? So I have two intercepts here, I know what their lengths are, I define them. You've got two new intercepts, I'd like you to measure them out. You should all get slightly different numbers, get your ruler, be as accurate as possible you can. Uh, so you're going to measure this intercept and this intercept. Okay, so measure that out. So it's actually uh, 1.6 centimeters and 
three point two. Because I think they're at eight million. Yeah. That's right. You can adjust those original ones. Um, the great thing is, we still at the same point. Oh, it's yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's enough time. If you're not measured yet, that's okay. Most of you have, and you will notice things like this. On my diagram, at least, um, these intercepts must be longer than um, the original intercepts I drew. By the way, can anyone tell me why? They have to be longer. Must, must, must. Ah, uh -huh, very good. Remember, we started off, at least if you did the same as me, we started off making these perpendicular, okay? So if you imagine this kind of like it's crossing the road, this line is the shortest way to cross the road because the perpendicular distance between two lines is the shortest distance. There's no other way you can draw it shorter. So therefore, these have to be longer. And there's a whole variety of numbers that I've um, heard. I've heard, you know, say five centimeters and 2.5 centimeters. I think someone who did it quite close did 4.2 centimeters and 2.1 centimeters. Um, I can go on and on and on. You should have some similar kinds of numbers because we're all on the same scale. What do you notice? What you should see is that every time this intercept up here, no matter how long your intercept is, and everyone's got a different one, this intercept is always twice as long as this intercept. Do you see that? Right? Whatever you've got. And the reason why is because the original intercepts that we drew were also in this ratio. Okay, now pause for a second. We have just observed, right, and we have um, we've tried to do it experimentally, and I, I literally mean that experimentally. Like you repeat an observation. You've, got, you've done it 24 times, 25 times, okay? And we have seen the same pattern over and over again. So now you're in the position of a, well, scientist, mathematician, whichever you are, both. How would you phrase this property that you seem to observe? Could you theorize, as in, make a theorem, that articulates what property this is. I want you to write one down. See if you can write one down, right? Obviously, you know, it's in our interest and in the interest of future mathematical students who are going to be writing your theorem many, many times, we want it to be as concise as possible. I've already given you a whole bunch of language to help you out. Write me a sentence, something that states what is generally true off of what we've observed here. I'll give you a minute or two to craft that sentence. I love putting you in this position because you are so often in the opposite position. You, you know, you've just been given sentences and go ahead, go forth and memorize, right? Um, can I just say, I'm looking at these, with a little bit of adjustment, I think all of them and most people's are missing a few little nuances, but they've got the general idea. Like any combination of these, which is correct, is acceptable. You remember what I said on our first day when we were starting geometry. Is it clear what you're saying, right? These are all completely different in terms of like order or the exact words that they're using, but they are all more or less saying the same thing. The parallel lines are cut by transversals. The ratio of the intercepts will be equal. Thumbs up, I give a thumbs up to that, right? On parallel lines, any lines drawn across the parallel lines, transversals, will have intercepts in the same ratio. It's the same thing, slightly different order. And on the right hand side, the same set of parallel lines I'm not sure what the same, same as what. It's, yeah, okay, no, it's right. Was I, I was questioning the word same. Uh, divide transversals in equal ratio, okay? I think all those are really getting at the same idea. Let me give you the, um, <clears throat> the textbook, right? Uh, statement, like articulation of this property. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Um, parallel lines. Nine words. It's not bad. Um, let me give you a phrase. <laughs> um, preserved, yeah. Let me give you a phrase which um which doesn't sound like a phrase that an a mathematics teacher would say. It sounds like the phrase that a, an English teacher would say. Um, a lexicon is like a, a, a bunch of meanings, right? So lexical refers to the meaning of, of words or symbols, okay? When it comes to lexical density, how, how tightly packed meaning is in, in a phrase, right? 
The mathematics is right up there, right? We are so up there, we just stop saying words and we just start saying symbols and expect you to remember what the symbols mean, right? Here, it's like, apart from one, two, three, every single word is like, <laughs> chock full of meaning, okay? And that's why we introduce terminology. So we, I mean, you know, it's, it's exactly right to say lines drawn across the parallel lines. But mathematicians are always trying to do things faster and, and more efficiently, right? So parallel lines preserve, so that's another shorter and more concise and kind of more elegant way of saying they're always going to be the same. The ratios of intercepts on transversals, okay? It's not so bad, considering how much it's trying to say. Now, here's the question. What would be the converse of this theorem? Because this theorem is true, by the way. Um, you've, you've observed it. How would you turn this around?